Welcome to the Prada Museum. We're here again with our weekly sessions in English, live on the museum's social media programming, thanks to an invitation from the museum and also from the ongoing support of the members of Friends of the Prado. And we encourage everyone to think about joining at Amigos or Friends to help us do extraordinary programs like this one. And here today we're going to enjoy the wonderful Upper Main Gallery in the museum and a very spectacular work by the painter Tintoretto, very famous. You can't walk by without noticing it and it drawing you in. The washing of the feet. Uh, the washing of the feet is a canvas that is a narrative scene taken from the book of St. John in the Bible where Jesus in an act of humility and service washes his disciples feet before the Last Supper. And Tintoretto is a painter in Venice who is painting uh, under the sh in a moment where Titian who's 30 years his elder has dominated the artistic scene in Venice and many of the commissions and he is making his way in this moment uh, with a kind of unexpected energy in his compositions and a new uh, focus and, dy and dynamism that is drawing attention and he is a painter that makes a clear progression in his style and it is in this decade in the middle of the 1540s that he begins to make a series of masterpieces and that have elements uh, common elements between them one being a great progress in pronounced profundity and depth of space and also his dynamism of the figures and foreshortening and movement that fill this space. So this is an extremely large canvas that was painted for a very specific place and very specific viewing conditions that are different from what we have today. And at first sight the composition kind of seems possibly a little odd that in the center foreground from when we look straight upon it there's a dog and the main characters of Jesus and Peter and John are relegated to the far right and this work was a commission for a chapel in the church of San Marcuola in Venice and it was a double commission that would have been on place, this was placed on the right side of a chapel facing the double commission, the companion piece by Tintoretto, which would have been the Last Supper. And there is also an echo of the Last Supper, which would happen right after the washing of the feet above the head of Jesus here in the background, which would be another, the subsequent activity of what happens after the washing of the feet, the Last Supper here in the background that would also face the composition in front of it. So the viewer would always see this painting from on the, their right side, a lateral right side. And Tintoretto's, he probably began the canvas in his workshop, but he knew from the beginning that he would have to adapt the viewpoint on site and to our eyes. And his idea of perspective is really quite revolutionary and revolutionary, especially in the tradition of, of Venetian painting. And he has a clear vanishing point for the space at the arc, at the background. And there's even a small uh, mark where there had been a nail where he would have used to pull out from there a different strings to create uh, a strong diagonals and create the diagonals of the architecture and the flooring. So if we, if we see the flooring here is the, the, 
the different um, ceramic tiles create straight lines as they come out to us, but as they follow, go to the right, they create more diagonals, and they're even kind of bending. He takes a liberty and bends the diagonals, and so he doesn't follow the exact scientific type of perspective, which wouldn't work to create this widened scene. Uh, but he bends it and he knows the rules so well that he can bend them and make it work for us, for our eyes. And he follows the diagonal with the side of the table, with the white mantle, the white cloth, and also the white cloth is then also echoed by the white cloth on the figure of Jesus. Uh, he had a lot of relationship with theater. When we look at this piece, we think of theater, we also the background, the monumental architecture in the background is inspired from a treatise on, as a suggested um, backdrop for a tragic scene in theater, which that was published at the time in an engraving, and Tintoretto had adapted this to Venice to create the central patio of this architecture to make it a canal with a boat. And we also know from studies, technical studies, that he painted the backdrop first, as if it were a theater set, uh, before he populated it with the figures of Jesus and his disciples. And in Tintoretto's process, we also know that he kind of used a small um, theater set in his studio with small wax figures and candles and would play with the composition of the figures and how they worked with lights and darks. And also in theater, he was related to uh, a, a group called the Polygraphy, who were writers that were in favor of more improvisation and vitality. And they kind of combined high and low culture and kind of poked fun a little bit at uh, high culture. And so possibly these figures here wrestling on the ground, these disciples, they're a little bit less idealized than in other Renaissance paintings. They're more human. They're, some of them are, uh, are off thinking on their own, but these two figures in this tension are almost quite comical as if they're wrestling to pull their boots off and creates a tension that if once the boot pops off, he's gonna fall backwards. So it's a little bit tongue in cheek. Uh, and also there's great eloquence with the gesturing of the figures of Jesus and Peter. Their bodies tell us of the protest that Peter had. He did not want Jesus to wash his feet. Jesus was his master. He said, no, this cannot be. And Jesus insisted that if you want to follow me, you have to uh, let me wash your feet. So there's this confrontation and we can see this in the, in the body gestures. And Tintoretto's technique is so modern. He's making great advances, experimenting. His brush strokes here on the shoulder are not modeling the shoulder any longer. They are wide and simplified and they seem to be just reflecting the light against the, against the cloth. And there's, this work came to the Spanish Royal Collection under the reign of Philip IV when Velazquez was his painter and Velazquez is in charge of the royal collections. And we see also, there are many art historians that propose that it very much influenced Las Meninas. And before we go, the, it was meant to be seen from here. So this painting would have always been seen from where it was commissioned from this spot. And you see that the composition kind of becomes much more classical. Jesus comes into the center of the, of the protagonism of the scene. Uh, everything runs in a very strong diagonal to the vanishing point of the arch, and it just comes into order. So it's very important to see it from this position, and it's wonderful to have it at the Prado Museum. And we in, in, invite everyone to come visit us and to find out more about this painting, more about Tintoretto, more about the other Venetian paintings here that are around it in this wonderful gallery and we encourage you to think about supporting the museum. We thank all of the amigos and all of the friends and we look forward to seeing you again next week.